Now that this kayak is complete to the point where I can put it on the water, I figured I would go ahead and give you guys a tour of its features and why I made some of the design choices that I made. Uh, let me start by saying that the whole point of this build was to make a kayak that I could use to fish the HRBT, which is the Hampton Roads Bridge Tunnel, which is one of the, the best places for striper fishing around here. The access to that fishery is limited. Um, you need to put in at a boat ramp that's in Willoughby Bay and take about a one and a half to two mile ride to get to the actual bridge. And then once you're there, you can do your fishing and then at the end of the night, you need to go back again. And that paddle out and paddle back is something that can just, if, if you're not going fast, it can just kill you, uh, it'll take forever and it, you come back and you'll be exhausted too or you'll even be exhausted before you even get there making that paddle and if there's any kind of wind at all then you're going to be fighting the wind and the waves the whole time so i wanted a kayak that had a motor on it that i could use to put in there get out to the bridge quickly to maximize the amount of time that i had to fish rather than spending all my time paddling. Once you get out to the bridge and you're fishing the light line at night, um, the stripers that are lined up in that light line are really spooky. And I found that when I was originally fishing out there in my Tarpon 140 with a paddle, you paddle up, you cast to those stripers and you could catch them, but you would, you would drift back down out of the way. To try to get more fishing time in, I got a Hobie Revolution um, so that I could pedal um, with my feet with their Mirage Drive and hold position and uh, continue to um, fish. But it seemed to me when I was fishing with my Hobie that when you would go out there with the, uh, with the, the fins that go back and forth under the, the kayak, that that seemed to it seemed to scare the fish in a similar way as the boaters did when they drove by trolling the light line, which would put them down. Um, I'm, I never proved to myself 100% that the Mirage Drive really did scare the fish away, but I had my suspicions. When I set out to build this kayak, I specifically wanted to make it so that it would be fast and powerful to get me out to the bridge as quickly as possible but once I was at the bridge if I needed to I could lift my motor completely up out of the water and then when I'm out there fishing I can use my paddle to do all of my maneuvering and fishing around and then um, hopefully that won't scare the fish if it turns out that having the trolling motor um, propelling me around and sneaking up on them and if I keep it at low power that that is okay it doesn't scare the fish then so much the better that's what I'll probably end up doing with that said um, let me show you a little bit around the kayak and show you some of the, the choices that I made and why I made them so let's start at the back of the boat with the trolling motor set up that I selected which is a Newport Vessels kayak series 55 pound thrust motor. The reason that I chose that motor was specifically related to what I mentioned earlier about trying to get out to the bridge as quickly as possible. I know that for most of the time when you're fishing um, just it, under normal circumstances you do not need that kind of thrust but if my goal is to get myself out to the bridge as quickly as possible I wanted to get every little last bit of power that I could to try to knock that drive time down. For the motor mount, I wanted something that would let me completely remove the motor and put it in the cargo container quickly and easily. At first, I attached a regular transom to the back of the kayak and clamped the motor onto it. But when I did that, I found that that transom sticking up here vertically interfered with the the lines that I was going to need to use for steering so I ended up um, having to change that plan 
and I ended up building a motor bracket in the back of here that stays on the boat, but the motor itself, if I pull out this pin, I can detach the motor. It slides out of these plastic blocks that are right here. These plastic blocks have slots cut in them so that these, uh, that these ribs slide into it. So I can attach the motor and then put this pin in place and that locks it in place quickly and easily. And then to get it back out again, pull the pin out, um, disconnect, disconnect these lines, and then pull it right out. Keeping in mind again that the point of this bracket in this motor setup is for me to be able to have the ability to fish with the motor completely up out of the water. I designed this so that when you pull this cord, um, this line that comes up will tilt the motor forward so that it lays down completely flat. So it'll set like this. It goes completely flat, um, comes completely out of the water. And when it does that, the steering plate that's on here self-centers on these horizontal brackets so that if it came up out of the water crooked, um, it would come up and it would, it would straighten up like that. And then when that's sitting in place like that, then I could fish for as long as I wanted to, uh, paddling around and not have to worry um, that the motor was dragging in the water. Um, chances are, however, that if I decide that I'm not going to be using the motor, I'm probably going to still have um, the motor down in the water because I want to attach an add-on rudder um, right here to this shaft so that I can foot steer even um, with, the, with the motor turned off. For maneuverability, it was important to me for this kayak to be as absolutely as maneuverable as possible. So when I designed the steering, um, if you'll notice this steering plate has a number of different holes in it. And the reason for that is I experimented with a, a few different locations um, for this steering line attachment point before I found the right one. And what I was specifically looking for here was a location that would be easy to uh, turn the motor um, using my toe steering uh, foot pedals. And that's why um, there's a large distance between the, the shaft and the attachment point for the for the, the steering, depending on where you put that attachment, will determine um, how much travel you get on your rotation. So that when this rotates, it will only go as far as a direct line between the exit of the steering line from the back of the kayak, draw a straight line between that and the steering line, in the center of the pivot point. And that is the maximum amount of um, rotation you can get. So if this was attached up here, you would only get like that much rotation. Um, if you went back here, it would really try to turn it like that. Um, I picked a spot where when I pull forward and these things are in line, that, that results in the motor being um, approximately 90 degrees in the back. It's not quite. It's got a little bit of an angle on it, but I tried to get it as close as I could so that I could pretty much spin in place. I would be getting side thrust on the back of the kayak that would let me spin. Right now, the tilt of the motor, it's free to tilt up. Um, so if I was to put the motor in reverse and run backwards, this would be free to tilt up. Um, during the testing that I did, I found that I could run at 50% power backwards before the weight of the motor wasn't enough to hold it down and it started to tilt up. So running between zero and half power is really not that bad because you don't run backwards all that much. When I'm out at the HRBT, I want this to be able to swing forward if I was to run into anything under the water um, and hit that motor. And there are things out there in the water that uh, at low tide are high enough so that you could possibly run into them and uh, damage something if this motor was locked in its down position. Now normally um, this 
little tab that's here is the lock that locks it in place. And um, in a regular boat, you would uh, you would squeeze this and lift it up, and then it would the angle would lock into place. And you could go all the way up and, and lock, it, lock it into place like that. You'll notice that when you squeeze on this, this little L, L comes up, and there's this little gap in here that uh, opens up. I made a little plastic key that um, has a slot that goes around this pull pin and I put a couple of pieces of uh, aluminum tape on here to just give it a little bit of a bump so that when you pull this with your fingers and you slide this into place it kind of pops into place and it holds itself right between it's pinched between the top of here and this uh, this little bar that's underneath and now it won't fall out when you tilt the motor up. It's pretty much secure. To lift the motor, this line attaches to the bar. It runs up to this clip and then down through a pulley that's here and then runs along the kayak up to where I can reach this line sitting in my seat. And when I want to lift it, I reach back and I grab this knot and I pull it forward and I put that loop right over that little knob that's right there and the length or the location of this knot and the location of that knob are set so that um, right now when I steer you can see that that pulls on the line just a little bit um, and right here that knot is up against is up against that uh, that bracket there so this lets me go to my full extent of steering without limiting the travel of the motor. And then when I want to lift it, I can straighten out, I can grab that, and I can pull forward and put it onto that knob. Here's what that motor lift process looks like when I have pulled up to the boat ramp, I have rigged my kayak up and I want to put the boat in the water. The first thing that I would do, come and grab this loop. drop it onto that knob and now the motor is up and out of the way and then when I get in the water I would be sitting in the seat and I would grab the rope and put it back down again. just like that Now up in the cockpit, I removed the foot pegs that came with this kayak and I replaced them with rudder control foot pegs that came from a, a, a rudder kit that I got from somebody off of Facebook Marketplace. This particular kit um, allows you to do toe steering, so the location of the foot pedals are set in place um, using this little arm as an adjuster and then to steer you tilt this forward and when you tilt it forward it pulls on the cables like that. There are adjusters here and here that allow you to fine-tune the angle of the pedals so that you can get it just right. If I wanted to I could loosen up this bolt right here and that's what controls the clamping of this plate onto the shaft so I could fine-tune the position of the motor and this plate if I had to. But so far I've been able to just eyeball the alignment between the plate and the motor and then um, fine tune the pedal uh, placement using these adjusters. Now to close out the video, I will show you what it looks like when you take the motor off and put it away. So unhook our electronics.
back in place. That's it.